Good morning, I'm Ashish Kalra. Uh, I run a family office here in India. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the University of Texas at Austin, a master's in operations research from Cornell University, um, and then worked after that for around six years in uh, New York and then Asia uh, with Citigroup Asset Management, and then went back to the University of Chicago Booth School of Business uh, to do, do, do an MBA. I believe it's the number one ranked business school this year and then have worked uh, roughly in the financial markets for the last 21 years or so uh, with names like UBS, Citigroup, BNP, before starting my own family office. Basically, what I want to try to do today is to get into uh, animal viruses, uh, basically into some of these zoonotic diseases uh, that are happening because animals and man are living closer together, but also because uh, man or human beings uh, are eating animals and the ramifications of that. So basically I start off with uh, the consumption of cattle or uh, the mad cow disease. It's the Kretzfeld Jacobs disease which happens uh, which uh, as a result of diseased eating diseased meat um, and human beings have died as a result of that. Uh, case study number two is consumption of chicken uh, the H15N1 virus or the avian bird influenza. Uh, it has happened now a number of times. Um, and recently there was a strain even in Canada from a couple of travelers from China uh, that started uh, the virus. And then third is the human consumption of pigs, uh, the swine flu influenza. Uh, this has also led to uh, the 2009 uh, swine flu pandemic, which I'll go into uh, later. Uh, some very interesting research uh, from John Cohen in Science talking about a swine flu, a new swine flu strain with human pandemic potential, increasingly found in pigs in uh, China. In 2009, when the swine flu pandemic happened, uh, it affected nearly 20% of the world's population, uh, killed nearly 350,000 people. Now, basically, what I argue is that animals have natural inbuilt mechanisms uh, to prevent themselves from human consumption. So basically um, there will be diseases that will happen in the case of human beings which will then prevent you from killing animals for human consumption. So I've talked about uh, the pigs and then importantly is bats because that's a very important uh, part of the whole uh, value chain. Uh, you have uh, uh, the Marburg virus which is a family of the phylo uh, virus and uh, basically uh, that's the original host of Ebola and the Nipah virus. It's killed 90% uh, of the people infected. Uh, some very interesting research by Dr. Melvin Sanikas basically uh, talking about why bats make the perfect host uh, for a number of viruses. Also some interesting work by uh, Fareed Zakaria in his 10 lessons uh, for a post-pandemic world talking about why bats have, they basically have uh, they fly very high temperatures and therefore they can carry a number of viruses. And if you actually look at the SARS virus, uh, the horseshoe bat was the reservoir of this virus that got, that got passed into chivets uh, and that led to the creation of the SARS virus. Basically here the Marburg uh, virus has been found in a number of bats in Africa, uh, even in China it causes uh, uh, severe bleeding and organ failure. Case number five and six, I want to talk about marine animals and uh, human beings killing whales uh, for human consumption. Uh, the reaction of that is uh, basically uh, there's, uh, it causes the snow caps to melt and causes global warming. Uh, case number six is dolphins. Uh, human beings consume dolphins in certain parts uh, basically, you have uh, dolphins having high mercury content which prevents them from being uh, eaten by humans. Same thing with sharks. Sharks kill certain predators uh, in the oceanic subsystem which multiply exponentially and therefore they are needed. And uh, sharks are hunted in the US, off the coast of Japan, India, Africa um, which is not optimal. Same thing uh, for shrimp. So basically I've gone into uh, some of these case studies. I'll go into the uh, uh, sort of 
the sort of more intensive uh, animal viruses, uh, which is basically the SARS virus. So this has been caused principally by chivets. So if you look at research from the Washington Post, uh, from John Cohen um, and Robert Roos in the Center for Disease, uh, basically talking about the increasing role of chivets in the um, uh, evolution of the SARS virus. Uh, and basically this happened in 2003, 2004. The Chinese government ordered 12,000 to 14,000 chivets uh, which is a four-legged mammal, it's a Chinese delicacy, to be killed in uh, February two, 2004. Now, the other thing uh, about SARS is there's an interesting piece in a book called The Pandemic uh, by Sonia Shah uh, Harper Collins. Basically, she talks about uh, Dr. Liu, who was uh, finishing his shift operating on SARS patients. He comes back to his hotel in Kowloon, Hong Kong, uh, meets a flight attendant, uh, she makes it to Singapore before being hospitalized. She passes it on to her doctor who heads to New York. Basically, uh, there's a group of people from Singapore, Vietnam, Canada, Ireland in the hotel who contract the virus. Basically, it spreads to five countries. And finally, SARS appears in 32 countries. Now, basically, this is the precursor of the current pandemic. With SARS, it's happened with consumption of chivets, human consumption of chivets. The case of uh, uh, the current pandemic, it has been caused because of consumption of pangolin, which have been infected by bats and the virus has gone back to pangolin. Next case study number 12, the human consumption of camels. Uh, you found this at the Middle East, this happened in uh, 2012, 2013. Um, basically, it's the same symptoms for human beings. Here, the camels were being uh, consumed. Um, so it's happened because of closeness to camels and then also because of consumption of camel meat, according to the Center for Disease uh, Infectious R Research. And the symptoms are the same for human beings. There's shortness of breath. Uh, you need mechanical ventilators. And this is the same thing that has happened uh, in uh, the current pandemic uh, in terms of symptoms. Now, Basically, this happened in a number of Middle Eastern countries where uh, camels are present in Bahrain, in Iran, in Jordan, in Kuwait, in Lebanon, in Saudi Arabia. The genesis of this started in Saudi Arabia. Now, the difference between this and the current pandemic is that in this current pandemic, there were regular six to seven flights from Wuhan to the US, regular six to seven flights from Wuhan to Iran, six regular six to seven flights to Europe, and that's how the virus spread. Essentially, the virus is spread um, by human mouth to mouth. And that's the most efficient way for the virus to spread. There are two holes in the human body. One is covered 100% of the time. The other is open. And that's what has facilitated uh, the spreading of the virus. I just spent a minute on the 1918 pandemic. Uh, basically, that was caused because of avian influenza. That's killing of birds and killing of pigs, swine flu. Um, and the current pandemic, which has been caused by the consumption of uh, pangolin. Uh, so basically, face masks are designed uh, to basically make you think what you eat. Don't kill and eat animals, period. Uh, just to conclude, finally, uh, five points. Animals have uh, natural inbuilt mechanisms to prevent themselves from human consumption. Point number two. Um, uh, the, uh, the, I've gone over the evolution of various animal viruses. Point number three, ecosystem B, which is human beings, cannot feed on ecosystem A, which is animals. Point number four, ecosystem C, which is cannibals, cannot feed on ecosystem B, which is human beings, they get brain disease. The design of human beings uh, is vegetarian. The, uh, the animal food chain has to be disrupted permanently not just during this pandemic. And lastly, there's a design of life. Basically, watch what you eat. Don't kill and eat animals. Thank you.